Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Onos and today we're going to talk about why you should farm Azai Nagamasa. We'll cover some of the more important drops you can get from him, how to maximise your chance of getting the decent loot, and cover some advice on how to beat him. So first off, why bother with Azai Nagamasa? Well, he drops the smithing text of a Kahuku Master's Armour, Sariyasha's Valour. I can confirm that 100% as I've received it myself. You can also drop the Art of War true and through for the sword skill, although I haven't got that yet. I know I previously said we're not about looking pretty here on the channel, but it'd be rude not to at least show you what it looks like. So the armor looks cool, but more importantly, the set bonuses on it are great. Bonuses to Amrita charge and anima, then as you add more pieces, the set gives you a damage scaling of A with your Amrita gauge charge. This can synergize really well with certain soul cores. Kasha, for example, gives you a really nice self heal on Yokai ability use and a speed boost on Amrita absorption. This all ties in nicely with the set bonuses. More anima from the armor set bonus, which means more frequent use of your Kasha soul core, which means more self healing and speed. Incredibly powerful, even at a basic level. It's a six piece set. The final set bonus is a minus 20% to dodge key consumption. The final piece to the set is the sword, Azai Ichimonji. You can get both the sword drop itself and the smithing text for the sword from Azai Nagamasa. I got the armor smithing text from him during the dual fight mission toward the end of the game on my first playthrough, not on New Game Plus. I actually got it the first time I beat him on this mission. I'll show you how I did that in a moment. You can also get the drops when you meet him in the mission, a bird in a cage, earlier in the game. Now, as a quick idea for you while we're talking about set bonuses, if you weren't too interested in the final set piece bonus, the key consumption on dodge, then what you could do is exchange the helmet for the set. Stick with me for a moment. If you use the sword as your fifth piece of the set bonus, even if it's just your secondary weapon and you never actually use it, that gets you the five set bonus, which is the attack bonus on Amrita charge. Then pick up a helmet like the female demon mask as an alternative. This helmet has an innate 4.4% anima charge bonus on it. This will bring the scaling up on your set even more. Just an idea. Anyway, back to the script. So, how did I get the boss to drop what I wanted? I boosted my item drop rate as much as I could with the gear I had. That's pretty obvious, I'm sure you guys know that. Now, I've got one major tip for the dual fights toward the end of the game. Make use of the stats on your ranged weapons. I know, I know, you're unlikely to actually use them in a fight, but hear me out. I have two sets of ranged weapons for farming boss fights. I don't care about the damage output because I won't be using them. All I care about is the item drop rate and look. Now, if you notice, the more specific item drop rate and equipment drop rate stats are higher than the flat bonuses. What I mean by this is if, for example, you get item drop rate versus yokai, the percentage increase will be higher than if you got the flat item drop rate bonus. So I wanted to double down on this. I have two sets of ranged weapons I use for farming. One has item drop rate and equipment drop rate versus humans tempered onto them. The other set has the same but for yokai. Then all I do is make sure I switch to the right ranged weapons before each fight so that I have the right ones on for whomever I'm fighting. Combining this on the two weapons gives me between an extra 5 and 10% equipment drop rate for humans or yokai. Add that to your hunter bonus for Kodama and other bonuses on your gear and you're starting to maximise your chances of getting the drops you want. In this instance, Azai is classed as a human just for the record. Right, okay, so how to beat him. The main thing you'll find annoying in this fight is that wing over his left shoulder. It will flat out block your damage when it's set in place. What I found useful was to circle around to him to my left, aiming to flank him as he attacks or even get around behind him. For the first half of the fight I stayed away from him and mainly got my damage in after he did his jumping attack. Your best bet is to wait out his attacks, block and dodge as appropriate, then hit him as he's recovering. When he goes into the dark realm, he has both wings, not just one, but he tends to go on the offensive which leaves him vulnerable. In this part of the fight I did my best to stay on top of him, burst counter his flying charges and keep the damage up. It's not the hardest fight but it can be annoying when he's blocking your attacks. As always guys if you found the video useful please leave me a like and comment to let me know. A big thank you to all my subs, you really helped to grow this channel from nothing in a very short space of time. The engagement seriously helps the motivation to keep working. Anyway, hope that helps, I'll wrap it up here. Thanks for joining me. 
See you for the next one, guys. Stay safe. Bye-bye now.